Thank you, Eric. It's a pleasure to have you here. It's uh, an honor to spend some time with you. Welcome to XCLR Davos and welcome to Web 2019. Thank you. So when you talk about AI, if you could throw some light upon, you know, the machine human harmony, especially for the next uh, 10 years coming decade. It, it, just, on mastering human AI collaboration, there's so much that can be done when it comes to building systems that deeply understand and complement human beings and then work with them and humans work with the machines in a mix of initiatives that could almost be like a conversation about problem solving someday. We're not there yet, but you can imagine that systems already can be learning about where are human blind spots, where are human competencies, and, and how do you complement them. So here's an example. We've been working this year, we'll be publishing very shortly at the Computer Human Interaction Conference a set of human AI collaborative guidelines for designing systems to work with people. It's an interesting uh, intersection of psychology, interaction design, and principles of AI. It's a lot of work that Microsoft is doing around tech for good. Uh, is there anything from a research point of view that you might want to talk about? Absolutely. I mean, our researchers uh, experiment with many different problem domains when it comes to principles as well as thinking about applications. And many are, are intrigued by uh, the prospect of addressing grand challenges in society. How do you build systems that can actually help to uh, tutor in, in insightful ways students. In fact, right now we're running at a Hyderabad, uh, a project um, uh, that's in collaboration with our Bangalore lab, um, thinking about how do you identify people at risk for dropping out, for stopping, uh, and, and troubleshooting what can get them to the next level. That's an AI application to personalize educational experiences as an example. We have another project in agriculture called Farm Beats, also a joint uh, effort between Hyderabad, Bangalore, and Redmond Lab in Seattle, Seattle area, on thinking through the use of AI as well as communications and Internet of Things technologies to change the way even small farms work, to make them more efficient, to help uh, farmers understand a decision as to when to plow and seed, um, monitoring moisture, uh, understanding uh, uh, issues around a disease, nematodes in the soil. Mm -hmm. These systems now can really start playing together as, as you know, in, in a harmonious way to really increase efficiencies of, with which we generate food. The whole I idea of understanding how to address epidemics, mm -hmm. to understand population flows, to address humanitarian crises. We have a whole area coming out of a joint effort between Microsoft policy team or the legal group and research and advanced technology called AI for Humanitarian Action, uh, which complements our AI for Earth project. Anything uh, with regard to leadership skills that would require change for the coming decade? Well, it's interesting. Um, you know, there's leadership in companies, and then there's this whole idea of what will happen if this gig work evolves and becomes freelancing, becomes more popular, coordinated by computation uh, and platforms. Uh, and, um, you know, um, I, I, I do see, even in gig work and freelance, notions of the need for leadership, even if it's crowdsourced, because teams might persist across space and time to get various kinds of things done. People that work well together, for example, there might be leadership roles to be played in coordinating human beings across these platforms. But it, back to, to the traditional enterprise, you know, um, I always say that, that for me, uh, leadership is, tr is, is understanding how to trust your talent and how to empower your own talent versus trying to do anything too top down. Uh, of course, that requires hiring the best talent. I often say that I like to manage by hiring. And uh, <laughs> if you can hire the right people, you don't have to put a lot of effort into managing them. So what would be your advice to uh, millennials for the next decade, Eric? Boy, that's so interesting. Um, you know, it goes without saying that STEM skills are going to be required and should be fun and should be taught more efficiently and should be part of middle school into high school for everybody. It's just the way we need to sort of be in this world to understand numbers, probabilities. Uh, but we also want to nurture the, the human side because much of what we do will be at the intersection, as it's been for many years, of technology and society. Uh, technology and people. So my last question actually Eric, uh, you know, for you would be what, what would be your advice be to your peer set 
uh, with regard to uh, technology innovation? Boy, um, one of my reactions is um, to uh, really think deeply at companies <clears throat> about um, investing enough in um, research staff that goes more towards the basic, a little bit outside of what you're trying to do, fostering research and development. It's always hard to do because people are looking at the bottom line and they want that short-term product to be better uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a one to three year kind of time frame. And in reality, it, you're not wasting your dollars. It, in some ways, I often say that investing in R&D wisely is no regrets investment because you build a platform of knowledge in your organization. Thank you so much, Eric. Oh, very, very thank, insightful thank you. discussion. It's great, it's thank been great you. chatting Absolutely. with you. Absolutely. Thank you for being here with us. You're welcome. Thank you.